Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Pollock, and I'm here with Dr. Tim Barker talking about intention to treat analysis. Thanks, Tim. Hi, Danielle. Yeah. So, can you tell me what is an intention to treat analysis? Well, an intention to treat analysis is really a method of statistical analysis. Um, let's imagine we're doing a randomized control trial. The intention to treat analysis, in essence, is the analysis of your data based on the initial randomization of the participants. We would We'd compare this to a per protocol analysis where the data is analyzed according to how the participants completed the actual treatment regime, not whether uh, they were randomized uh, to completion or not. What are the benefits of an intention to treat analysis? An intention to treat analysis maintains the integrity of the randomization procedure. Now, randomization is so important when doing a controlled trial because what we want is an even distribution of participant characteristics between each study arm of that trial. We want to make sure there is an even amount of males and females in each group. Let's just keep it simple and say we've got two groups, an, in, uh, an intervention and a comparator. We want to make sure that the mean age of the participants is uh, at least similar enough between these two groups. Now, during a randomized controlled trial, it is very common for people to become lost to follow-up, where they don't complete the whole treatment regime for whatever reason. They might uh, drop out because they can't make the time to keep taking the, the treatment. They might drop out because the treatment is actually ineffective for them and they don't want to continue using it. Or they might drop out because the treatment is actually hurting them. It's causing an adverse uh, event or reaction. Now, what loss of follow-up does, and what dropout does, is it loses this, uh, the integrity of randomization, where we no longer have an even distribution of participant characteristics between groups. So when we analyze our data using the intention to treat analysis, we maintain the integrity of the benefits of randomization. So what do we find are some common problems when it comes to an intention to treat analysis? Well, doing an intention to treat analysis is, is um, wonderful in theory, but there are many different issues that arise. The first being that it's typically misreported in the literature. What do you do if you have uh, uh, outcomes measured at different time points? So you've got an outcome measured at time point uh, one, which is day one, day two, and day three, and somebody drops out at day three. They've got a measurement for day one and day two, but not for day three. What do we do in that situation? We can use the last measure carried, for, uh, carried over. So their measure at day two becomes their measure for day three. Some people might take an average over their data for day one and day two, but it's an imperfect science. We simply do not have uh, all the available um, evidence to suggest what should or shouldn't be done uh, necessarily when these uh, problems occur. So what resources should a reviewer be looking at? Uh, well, if you want to learn more about intention to treat analysis, firstly, I'd strongly suggest you look at the JVR Manual for Evidence Synthesis. The Cochrane Handbook, again, is a wonderful resource for identifying when intention to treat analysis should be performed. I think it's also very important to mention that reviewers need to understand the outcome itself and when intention to treat analysis should be used and how it should be used. Thank you, Tim, for talking to us about intention to treat analysis today.